Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a good one. I'm doing a product review video and it's over this AFR LS3 Enforcer head. This head's brand new. There's a lot to show you with this and it's pretty cool. So I can't wait to show you. Okay guys, here's the head. But before I talk about this, I want to mention this. Because I want to be upfront and open and honest. I am an AFR dealer. So I sell AFR heads, but I'm also a dealer for like Brodick, Strict Flow, pretty much any cylinder heads. I only bring that up because I don't want you thinking I've given a biased opinion on this AFR head because I sell them, because I sell other heads too. But I also want to be upfront to let you know that I am a dealer. So they did send me this head um, to flow test and do an evaluation for for this channel, but I also have to send it back. So, but I just want to be upfront with that. So anyway, here's the thing with the enforcer heads in general. So if you're familiar with my channel at all, you know I've, I've done a review on just about every other Enforcer head besides the LS1. I haven't done that one, but I have for the small block Chevy, small block Ford, big block Chevy as well. With all those heads that are out there, with the exception of this one so far, they've all been a different design that AFR didn't come up with. So for instance, the small block Chevy and the small block Ford, those are pretty much an imitation of a dart design. It doesn't mean that AFR necessarily copied them, but that's what that design came from. It wasn't um, an AFR design piece. This AFR LS3 Enforcer head is the exception. This is completely their design. So this is not a knockoff or an imitation of anybody else's. This is something they did directly. They made themselves. So this is brand new and it's their unique design. So if you hear someone else saying that this is just a knockoff of someone else's head, they're completely wrong. This is absolutely their design. And once you see all the stuff I'm showing you with the head, you'll understand what I mean by that. But anyway, to the head. The head comes with a 72cc chamber, which is great. Um, that's about the same size as your stock one. But if you notice the difference in chamber shape, so here we have a stock 823. This is the chamber. I'll try to turn my camera this way. This is how their chamber shape looks. And if you compare it to the AFR, this chamber design is much better. Much, much better design. You don't have weird dips in it. Um, you don't have bulges around the spark plug. This is a much, much better design. So straight up. I'm going to talk about valve spacing in a little bit so you can see what I mean by that. But if you look at it, the valve is also off the cylinder bore, which I'll talk about in a minute because that's huge. These come with a 208 intake valve and a 1600 exhaust valve. Now that varies from a stock one because a stock valve is a 1600. Uh, sorry 2.165 and i believe 1590 so this is a bigger exhaust valve but a smaller intake valve and you're like oh my gosh that sounds like it'd be horrible wait till you see the flow numbers i am completely impressed with this because of the size of this this heads itself as far as the intake runner volume 238 cc's which thank you god for them doing that because one of the things i have said now this is my opinion you're welcome to your own I think the LS3 heads in general are too big. So I, I'm sure GM had a great idea when they decided to do that to make them big, but they're too big. So if you do any of the cross-sectional measurements and anything like that, they're like 270 cc's. But remember, this is a longer port, so you can't compare it to like a small block Chevy's as far as cc's. But still, even the cross-sections, when you measure those, much larger than what it needs to be for like a a truck a six liter truck that's doing pulling stuff and that's why their cam timing is so small on those so i really thought someone needs to have a small runner volume ls3 head and afr did it 238 cc's so a more in line with what you'd expect i took measurements from all the um uh cross sections in the port that i usually do so you can see what i'm talking about because even at that this has still got quite a bit of cross section, but if you're a guy and you've got your six liter and you're just using your truck for towing, but you've got a head like this one where it's, let me see if I can get it. This is a stock one where it's got a crack and you need a replacement one and you want something better in stock. This might be a great opp uh, opportunity for you to use because this one's, I have 100% certain this is going to make more power and it's also going to make more torque in the range you're probably at. Um, so, yeah, I think this is absolutely a win. So definitely worth it. As far as a couple different things from stock, we'll get obvious ones. If you notice, it's got the extra head bolt here, and then you've got the extra one here for those that have the block provisions where you can do some more tightening with this one. 
Um, definitely a better deal, definitely stronger than having this. The other thing, I did measure the deck. So a lot of LS guys are boost guys. It's just, just the way of the world it is anymore. And LS guys, I, I know you're all about the boost and stuff, but the one thing that you have a disadvantage with is on stock castings, the decks aren't necessarily thin, but they're too thin because when you look where your head bolt hole is compared to where your cylinder is, it's likely to lift and you need a thicker deck to get a better clamping force. So typically, um, from what I've seen from customer support, about 20 pounds of, uh, of boost is typically where they try uh, lifting the head. And it's, it's more because these heads are thinner and the heat treat on them. So they don't have as much deck. Measuring this head, besides having the extra head bolts, which I'm not entirely sure they do much for clamping, this deck, when I measure it, it's about 120 thousandths thicker than the stock one. So this will give you a better retention as far as your gasket for boost, which is, it's always a win to do that. So definitely uh, thicker decks, a win. Now, uh, looking at the port itself, my camera, does, my lights decided it wants to do a little flickering. Sorry about that. You can see it's got a vein here. I'm going to pause real quick so I can get this light reset. Hopefully that's better and doesn't cause people to have seizures. The vein's different. So this is a definite thing that you could tell that this is not a copy of anything else. If you look at the vein position on the AFR head, and it's kind of hard to see just because of the way that they did it. It's got more of a lope this way. If you compare that to a stock one, which of course isn't having lighting, you can kind of see it's going straight. That's not what AFR did. They did it this way. You might ask yourself, why do people put veins that way? Well, the theory is that you're going to have more air flow around more of the area of the uh, valve. So that's the idea for that. Uh, that's a theory anyway, one of them. Anyway, there's that. I did measure the throat. So those are wondering what's the throat and anything. Throat goes from here across, and I measured at 1.897. So it's got a 91.2% throat, and that comes out to 2.82 CSA, not removing the stem. Um, the bowl, which goes from across here, I measured at 2.040, and that gives you 98% of the intake valve, which that's pretty good. So. If you look at that, nice and conservative, this would, 91.2 is kind of on the, it's not large, but it's larger than, than like a 90. 98% is perfect for bowl. This thing's going to have great uh, recovery. The only thing I will say, and this is going to be almost impossible to capture on camera, is this is the bowl, and there's your seat. Now, I want you to hear this. It clicks right there. It's actually touching. There's a ledge right underneath the seat that it can't be captured on camera but there's a ledge right there. So in other words, the casting shifted slightly there. If someone was a DIY guy and wanted to do a little blending there, you might make your bowl 91.5%. You would remove that and would actually gain some flow. Looking at the chamber and its transitions, that's the other thing too. On these enforcer heads, AFR is not doing the valve job. They're done overseas. The enforcer head line from them, all the machine work and the casting's done overseas. AFR simply assembles them and they use their components, which I'll show you in a second. Now, so this valve job is not the most advanced one that they usually do on like their mongoose heads. Um, but it's not bad. I mean, it flows really well. It does have a slight lip here, which hurts a little bit on the flow side, but that's not bad. You could definitely see more of it on the exhaust side, but also not bad. And you could tell it doesn't have the radius on the exhaust valve job there. It, usually they do, but this one doesn't. So let me move my light over here. There we go, maybe. You can tell there's no radius on the exhaust valve job. Usually they're all their aftermarket ones, like their enforcers, not the enforcers, but their eliminators, the mongoose, all their CNC stuff has a radius valve job. So you can tell this one isn't done from the factory. I mean, from their factory, it's done overseas. Um, as far as checking them, I will say this, AFR is really good about checking their stuff. So besides just relying on someone over there to do it, they actually do check to make sure that they're sealed before they actually assemble them, which is a great deal. So when you get them, you can rest assured that they're sealed up. Um, anyway, there's this side's view, but I want to show you the other views, and we'll talk about valve spacing on these heads and eventually get the flow numbers. Here's the view from the intake port side. And, I mean, it's a nice-looking port. It's much more conservative than the stock LS3, obviously, because of the size. So they moved a lot of things down and made it a little bit smaller, which is great. I took some measurements, and the first one I do is the cross-section at the short side apex. So this line right here, let me focus the camera, there we go. This is the apex, so I go from across, and then I go up and down. That gives me a cross-section at the apex, and that's 3.09. 3.09 is 
which is not bad. It's a relatively, if this was a small block Chevy head and more race head, you've got it, which once you see the flow numbers is about what they are. The next one is the push rod pinch. This should be the smallest part of the port, which is actually about here. I go across and then up and down. That came out to 2.82 CSA. So that's the minimum CSA. Just to give you an idea, that's plenty of CSA to turn a lot of RPMs, um, especially with a 400. 408 for you uh, LS guys, you've got enough cross-section to turn quite a bit of RPMs, uh, more than seven. So especially if you're just doing a regular six liter, the, even though it seems small, 238 cc's doesn't seem like you're going to make peak power in the higher RPM range. You've got the area to do it. it you truly do. And just to give you an idea, this is a well-balanced port. Now let me explain what I mean. If you remember what the CSA was at the throat, it was 2.82. The pinch is 2.82, which means both of those are about the same. The port is the same size here. It grows a little bit as it goes over the short side, and it goes back to the same size at the throat. Pretty good balanced port to have it that way. So not bad. Really, really, really good. Um, one of the things I do want to point out for difference between the stock and this one is you see right there, see that hole at the top? What that hole is, is it's this hole right here. All aftermarket heads have this, but I want to point this out because the factory does it. That's this hole. This is a rocker stud. So when you put your stand on and stuff, this is where that rocker bolt goes into. All you have to do is put thread sealer on it. Make sure you put thread sealer on this one. I usually put anises on the exhaust, but you have to have thread sealer there. Otherwise, what can happen is just from the suction, it can actually suck in oil and you get it into your port. Just thread sealer. It's easy peasy. It's common on all ones, um, all aftermarket stuff. Stock ones just don't have it. They've got that big old bulge, which I'm not sure without the light being on it, you can even see, but there's a bulge in the port on the stock one right there. Um, this doesn't have it. Obviously, it helps airflow having that bulge gone. But let me show you the exhaust side real quick. You got some nice, nice exhaust ports compared to the, your stock LS3. Nice. Not too large. Pretty, pretty good. So can't complain there. But let me show you some things about valve spacing real quick because that is different from them and we'll get to the flow numbers okay one thing about this afr head um, this enforcer ls3 head is the valve spacing is moved so let me kind of explain what i mean by that i've got it set up here and you get the intake side here so this is the intake valve this is your exhaust valve from the measurements i've gotten i'm going to show you how i got those in a second what I can determine is this intake valve was moved over 97,000. So it's probably actually 90,000 because there's some the difference in the guide that's making up that difference, but it's moved over 90,000. So how did I come up with that? Well, back here, this is a stock LS3 head. This is actually an 823 casting, probably the most common casting you can get from um, an LS3 head from GM. And what I did was I just used my calipers here. So I'm going to show you. Let me get these I'm gonna re-zero it here but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from it's all back here you can measure from this intake to the exhaust valve now both of these are eight millimeters and yes there are some wiggle room in the guide so it might lose a few thousands but you'll get the idea what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go across like this I'm gonna get this distance and if you look at it I'm gonna go ahead and zero it that's what we have now I'm gonna try my oh, I already moved it we bring it over here you, it's visually obvious how much different distance there is. So what I do is I squeeze it up and it gets about 92,000. So about 90, like I said, about 90 thousandths. So the question then is, well, did the exhaust valve get moved over to the intake valve or get moved over? Well, here's an easy way to do that one too. Back to our stock LS3 head. This is the exhaust valve and that's the exhaust valve. So if we measure the distance from exhaust valve to exhaust valve, so just like this, and as long as I'm going to re zero my gauge, as long as we do the same thing over here, we'll get about the same. It says within eight thousandths, which really that's guide clearance. Um, it's or the valve itself, or me just holding it wrong. It's relatively close. In other words, the exhaust valves are in the same location as the stock LS3 head, but what's happened is the intake ones compared to stock have been moved over. So I know what you're thinking then. Awesome. That means this AFR LS3 head, you can probably put it on a smaller bore, say like a 5.3 or 4.8. You could put it on that bore because they're both the same size or maybe a 5.7. Well, I don't have an exact answer for you on that deal, but here's what I can tell you. If it's moved over 90 thousandths, you get some more room. 
because from the stock LS3, you got about 100 thousandths before it's into the cylinder wall. So a stock 5.3, I think it's like 3.78 or so. Um, if you move over 90 thousandths from a 430 bore or a four inch bore, you're still 3.9. So you're still far away from that 3.78. And I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute. This is a 2165 intake valve on the stock head. You're a 208. That's correct. So you're gonna you lose a little. You get you know that's about an eighty thousandths difference, but it's from the circle. So you got this side taking off forty, and so is this side. So together, that's only gonna equal one hundred and thirty, and that's still not gonna be enough probably to clear a five three or four eight. At least on the stock board, those are the same bore I know. Uh, it's probably not gonna clear them without it being overboard. It's just probably not there. And you're like, well, what about this? How do the small bore heads from other manufacturers do it? Well, I actually measured one to see. It's actually moved over the intake valve even further, another hundred, another forty thousandths, and those just barely clear a five seven bore, not the five three slash four eight bore. So what I'm trying to say is, will they work on a small bore? Uh, most likely not. Maybe the five seven, probably not on the four eight five three bore. But what it does do if you're running these on a six liter, the valve being moved over unshrouds it. So when I flip this head back around you could see when I'm talking about this uh, spacing. This should give you a better view about what I mean about the valves being moved over. When you see the distance between here, look at this. This is the chamber wall all the way to where the valve job is. And you compare this to the stock one. This is me cutting out the valve job, so this is not how they come stock. And you could tell my valve job, which is only 120 thousandths more width than whatever the valve is, it's touching that, okay? And you can just see it's much, much, much tighter compared to this. Way more open. Here's the other thing. You can kind of tell here. Look at the distance between. Yes, that's a sharp edge. Big deal. Look at the distance between the intake and exhaust valve on the AFR. And see how much more material there is. And remember, this is a bigger valve. This is 2165. So this is way more this way than this one so hopefully that kind of explains some of the spacing how does this help big thing is when you're moving it off the sonar wall it's closer to the center of the bore it typically helps flow and we'll get to see the flow number soon now one of the things you may be asking yourself about the valve spacing is well what about the rockers and how are they going to line up if the valve got moved over well afr includes their own stand when you order the heads and this is it and what it does is it simply just bolts on and allows you to use your rockers in other words, they have adjusted them so that the position lines up correctly. That's it, but it comes with it, so it's not an extra cost or anything like that, but that is the stand that would come with it to fix that. The next question may be asked, well, what about the pockets on the piston, though? Well, um, most LS6, or L, sorry, LS3 engines are flat. They don't even have a valve pocket, so having it moved over is not a big deal. Like, what about an aftermarket one? Well, if you think about it, even though it's moved over 90,000 because of the smaller valve, that location, that center is shifted over but it's because of the smaller valve it's not going to be an issue most manufacturers anyway make the valve pocket so wide to account for differences in the spacings of the head so typically you're fine but i would check with your piston manufacturers but i'd say in general most of the time it's never an issue anyway that explains the uh whole valve spacing i want to talk about some of the hardware this is the valve that comes with it and if you look this is a 208 intake valve if you notice, it's got a nice back cut on that. Nice back cut. Nice width. These are quality stainless steel valves. These aren't some cheap deals. These are definitely well worth it. So even though it's an, an overseas casting, the valves themselves are nice pieces. So, And this is the exhaust valve. And I haven't checked, but I'm sure that they do. They probably have an Econel upgrade that you could do on these. But I haven't checked on that. But they, you, they do for the Mongoose LS3 which is, I have to say, and I'm not, I know it sounds like I'm an AFR salesman when I say this, the best LS3 head out of the box that I've had on my bench, CNC Porter one, has been the AFR LS3 Mongoose. And I mean, I've tested others. So if you're like, no, nah, what about this guy in Texas or this guy? Nope, Every, I'm telling you. And it's a good head. This is the same spacing. So I think they're using the same valve. So if that's the case, then you would be able, obviously not the same intake valve, but I'm fairly certain they would have an Inconel exhaust valve for those guys that are running, you know, turbos or whatnot, because you definitely would want to have a better exhaust valve whenever you're adding a lot of boost. 
So I, and the spring that comes with it is this pack spring, which the two best spring manufacturers, in my opinion, are PSI number one and pack number two. I'm going to measure these and see what the actual spring pressures are. So you can see, because, um, you may be able to get a titanium um, retainer upgrade, but they come with a steel one, but I'm going to measure the spring pressure so you can see what they're like in case you're wondering if it'll work with your camshaft or not. You can see what the pressures are like. So I'll do that real quick and I'll show you that. Here are the spring pressures from the spring. So this is my Buxton valve spring compressor. It's a really high tech thing. Uh, but anyway, the installed height that I came up with was 1.8. And at that, the seat pressure comes up to 148 pounds on the seat. Not bad. It's actually pretty good. Uh, typically, we're like 155, but you're not that far off. At a 660 lift, you'd have 395 pounds on open pressure, which if you're doing like a Brian Tuley can, you're probably running like 660, 630. So in general, that thing will work pretty well. So I wouldn't have any problem with that turning up 6,500 RPM. Shouldn't anyway. But uh, there you go. And there's also, like I said, I, I believe they'll offer a titanium um, retainer upgrade. So if you want to turn a little bit more RPMs. All right, here are the part you probably came to watch the video to see. These are the flow numbers. Now it came from my Science Digital 680 bench. I didn't flow it on my Superflow 750. Usually that one reads uh, oh, maybe 5, 6 CFM better, but I, I like my signs. I think it's more accurate. But anyway, here are your numbers. So if I look here, I'm going to switch my hands actually. I'm getting close, so hopefully you guys can see it on your phone. But the thing's amazing. With the move valve spacing, you can tell how much better it helped it. So I like the, the thing, number I care most about is 400. When you look at 400, 274 CFM. Fantastic. At 5, it's 308. At 550, so I did do these little half increments. 550, 319. 600, 329. At 650, it actually drops. 307, 307, 309. Then it starts coming about 9, 314. So really, it's peaking about 600 valve lift. Now, I know you're thinking, well, then I'm not going to run more than 600 inch valve lift. You're making a mistake if you do that. I've said this before. If you run a 600 valve lift, you don't even see that number, but for a fraction, if any time, you'd only see down here. If you ran like a 660 valve lift, you'd be like, well, you'll be like worse at 307. Yes, but you'll actually spend more time at 300 where it's flowing 329. Anyway, really good numbers there. On the exhaust side, if you look... 400, 171. Remember, this is without exhaust pipe. I do not flow in the exhaust pipe because um, you can manipulate the exhaust pipe and make the numbers look better than what they should. So I don't flow with an exhaust pipe. 171 on, at 400. At 600, it's 205, which is really good. And peaks at 215. Really, really good. But you're probably asking yourself, well, how does that even compare to a stock LS3, right? Well, here's the stock LS3 numbers. I'm just going to put them next to each other so you can kind of see. Kind of got my paper folded in a weird way. We'll just go through them. So we'll start with the intake. Um, we'll start at 200 because I really don't care about one. The LS3 Enforcer, 156 to 140, 16 CFM gain. 300, 227 to 212, 213, huge gain. Still from the Enforcer. The Enforcer is 274 compared to the stock, 260 at 4. Huge gain there as well. 5 is 308 versus a 298. We're going to have to go to 6. It's 318 versus 329. Now, I did do 650 here, and it's 320 versus the 650 here. It's a little bit lower at 650 than the stock one, but let's not forget. The stock head's 270 cc's. This is 238 cc's. That's a 2165 valve. That's a 208. What I'm trying to get at is this thing outflows the bigger valve, except for small little sections. At 650, it did worse, but at the others, at 7, Let's see where we at here. 300. And this is 307. So only at 650 is better than this than the stock. The stock one's better. This thing's amazing. But what about the exhaust side? We look at four 171 to 178. For no reason that stock one's better. It's kind of weird. Um, but let's see. Let's go six. 600 205 versus the 200. Hmm. So yeah, and Forster is better there. And even at peaks, 215 versus 209. So it's not quite as much as better, especially in the lower lifts, looks like, as the LS, um, stock LS3, but definitely at the peaks it is. And really, you kind of can't compare exhaust numbers. And I know it sounds like I'm just trying to sell AFR. I'm truly not, because on the flow bench, I'm only doing 20 inches of vacuum. The exhaust pressure coming out of an engine is way higher. So this just pretty much it can only tell you if it's bad or good. But regardless, it's, it's better, especially at peak. Um, 
than the stock one. The intake flow is not even close. This is way, way better. So you've got a smaller valve, higher intake flow, thicker decks, smaller port, definitely going to have more velocity. To me, this is truly a win. Um, so anyway, it might sound like I'm biased, but I really, really do like this head. For those that have watched my channel for a long time, you're like, well, why don't you test that head? I would love to see you test this head on your um, mule. The LS Dino Mule, which is a 408, is actually the short box together. I would love to test this head, but right now I've got a solid roller that cam that's in it. So I'd have to switch to a hydraulic roller cam for these to work. Now they do make solid roller springs that fit this, but then I have to have a shaft rocker set up so they could actually take it because the stock rocker will not take solid roller pressures. It would be interesting though. I would be very, very interested to see what it would do. So if I got like a I don't know, truck Norris cam from Brian Tooley, put these on there and see how it actually compared to the small block Chevy. That'd be really, really neat. And then also, you know, then switch to the saw roller and some different stuff. But I would love to test these, but these aren't mine. They're going back to AFR probably tomorrow. So hopefully that gives you some information about the heads. Maybe eventually I'll get to test them on a dyno mule and you actually get to see how they compare. But honestly, I'm quite impressed. And not just because I'm selling them. For the amount of money that it is, it's finally a small port. Yeah. I think this is good. Anyway, hopefully you guys got everything you wanted out of this video. If there's some other questions that I can answer real quick, put it in the comments and I can uh, do that for you. Um, but in general, very nice head. So there's my review. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. Remember, I am no Superman. Don't take my words as gospel. I do not port cast iron heads. And you guys, take care.